With the popularity of DSLR cameras today, Premiere Pro CC makes it easier than ever to allow you to simply shoot your footage, bring it right into Premiere Pro, drop it into the timeline, and start cutting together. Even if you're working with mixed DSLR footage, whether it's at different frame rates, uh, different frame sizes, uh, 60 frames per second, 30 frame, 24 frame, using Nikon or Canon cameras, doesn't matter. We make it very easy for you to take that footage, review it, drag it in, and basically start telling your story. So in this first part of this multi-part series, I'm going to show you just the very basics of how to essentially bring footage in, work with mixed media, drag it into a sequence, create those sequences, adjust things like fractional playback resolutions, leveraging our Mercury playback engine to really give you the best performance based on the type of system that you're working on, and then kind of give you some of the little tools and techniques here to show you how to move forward. So basically, I start in the media browser. Now, this is if we want to just use Premiere Pro by itself. So what you can see here in the media browser, I actually have a card reader attached. So this actually happens to be a USB 2 card reader. And you can see that I've got my CF card connected here. And if we look down into the drives attached, we're actually looking at this Lexar card. And we're basically viewing the card as it is. Now, I haven't transferred anything. I haven't transcoded. I haven't done anything. The media was shot. I'm now looking at that media on the card. Now, that's one of the really nice things in Premiere Pro is that we work natively with all of your DSLR formats. So you don't have to transcode. You don't have to convert. If you want to, there are ways to do that. And in the next part, I'll show you in Prelude how to do that. But here, we're just going to work with this native footage because Premiere Pro works natively with all this DSLR stuff. So basically, I plug in my card reader, I insert my card, and then I can begin using the hover scrub feature. So this allows me to essentially look at the media that's on my card and literally scrub through it so I can see what's inside of the shot. Because again, one of the nice things is today, with media cards getting larger and larger and less expensive, Whereas we used to shoot with 8 gig cards, now typically I'll shoot with a 32 gig card or a 64 gig card, and I just shoot more footage than I need. So the benefits of Hover Scrub are not only, of course, can we resize our thumbnails here to make these a little bit bigger. If I click inside of a clip, now you'll see that I have a little playhead that I can click and drag. Or I can use standard JKL keys to quickly review this footage right inside the media browser. And basically, this tells me very quickly, nothing's going on in this shot. I'm adjusting focus. So therefore, I'm not going to import this clip. I don't need it. There's nothing going on here that's interesting. So this is one of the really nice things about Media Browser and Hover Scrub is that you can quickly review and decide what exactly is that you want to use and want to effectively edit. So we're looking at a whole series of footage that I shot here on Safari down in South Africa. And again, as I start to work with this media and I find the clips that I like, I'm just going to shrink this back down again. I can click it, I can review it, and then I can simply click and drag it from the Media Browser panel into my project panel, and now it's in my project. So again, one of the nice things about this ability is that I haven't even transferred it yet. I'm still reading the media directly off the card. Not that you should always do it this way. This is just giving you the fastest and easiest way to review your media. Now, typically, again, if you look at the second episode with Prelude, you'll see how you can actually easier copy all of this stuff to a drive. But it works the same way. So let me go ahead and drag in a couple other clips. Here's a nice one of the lion actually looking at me right at the beginning there, looking very unhappy, actually. Let's go ahead and click that, drag it into my project. And maybe we'll grab one other clip as the lion approaches like this and drag these in. OK. Now, what you'll also see is that I've already copied some of the footage from my CF card to my hard drive, to some local or external drive. Now, again, performance-wise, is it going to be better if you have it copied someplace else? Sure, because we're literally reading it off the card. The point is, Premiere Pro allows you to do this and very quickly review and start telling your story. So let's start with some of this footage that I have here and actually working with things like in and out points. So again, from within inside the project panel here, I can also resize my thumbnails. And I can click inside of this clip, and I can start playing it back. And I'm thinking that I want this shot to begin right as the elephant kind of comes out from behind the bushes. So I can hit I to set my endpoint. Shuttle forward, it gets very shaky. So maybe right about there, before it gets a little too shaky, set my out point. Again, if I wanted to, whoops, if I wanted to double click on this and actually see what that looks like inside the source monitor, you can see that my in and outs are reflected there. 
Again, I can play it up here. And at this point, if I wanted to start building my sequence, I can simply right click and choose New Sequence from Clip. And what this does is that it's going to take the all the attributes of this clip, the frame size, the frame rate, the pixel aspect ratio, and automatically build a sequence for me with those attributes like this. Boom, there we go. And now I have my clip in the timeline. I can play it back. And that's it. It's that simple. Now, again, in the project panel, you still have your new item icon down here where you can actually go into the Create New Sequence dialog box. Now, in the past, I, done a, I did a couple of videos in CS5 and 5.5. This was effectively where you would create your new sequences. Now, we still have this. You can still use it. You'll see that we actually have a specific area here for digital SLR presets and all the various frame sizes and frame rates. Um, and you can go in here and you can modify settings. This is sometimes nice because, again, you can change editing modes where you'll see, again, that we have a specific DSLR editing mode. You can also do things like creating preview files. So if you wanted to use, say, a ProRes or a DNX HD preview file workflow, which many of you may be familiar with if you're coming from an FCP or an Avid background, we simply go into Custom. And then down into our preview file format here, I could go into something like QuickTime, and I could choose Apple ProRes 422. I could change my width and height, again, depending upon the frame size of my footage. And I could actually create preview files that would be used not only during the editing process, but if I leverage those preview files during render time, it'll speed up the render even more. So again, if you're used to working in this preview file workflow, you can use that here in the settings. You have to go into the sequence dialog uh, to make those adjustments. So the point is, you have all of this available to you. If you never want to bother with this dialog, though, it's as simple as right-clicking, create new sequence from clip, and you're done. You also have the ability to take your clips and drag them directly onto the new item icon, and it will do the same thing. I'm kind of a right-click sort of person, so I like to do it that way. Now, in terms of mixing and matching your footage, this happens to be uh, Nikon D800 at th uh, 24 frames per second, or 23976. What if I have other footage that was shot in another frame size frame rate? So here, if I double-click on this, this was footage shot on my Canon 7D. So you can see this was done in India a couple of years ago. Now this, if we take a look at the attributes here, if I could just go ahead and turn on my preview area, you'll very quickly see that this actually happens to be 720p at 60 frames. So again, different frame size, different frame rate. Well, one of the brilliant things about working with DSLR and Premiere Pro CC is that you can drag and drop all of this stuff into the same timeline. It just all works together. It works brilliantly, and you don't have to think about it. So again, I could set my ins and outs, or in this case, this is a fairly short clip. I'm just going to take the entire thing, drag it into my timeline. Now, of course, there's going to be one slight issue, which is that when we segue from 1080p into 720p, there's an obvious frame size difference. So to remedy that, I can simply right click here, or control click, and choose scale to frame size, and it will automatically scale my visuals up. Now, you also have a preset, a default preset inside Premiere's preferences where you can do that on import. Um, it just depends on how you want to work. Now, typically, most people don't necessarily want to upscale 720p to 1080p, obviously, but Really, depending upon what you're shooting, the lenses you're using, quite frankly, sometimes it looks really great. And in the case of this footage, it happens to look pretty good. Now, when playback performance becomes an issue, here's where you can now leverage things like the Mercury playback, fractional playback, and pause settings. So you'll see here that we have inside of our program monitor this little display that's currently listed everything at quarter. This is our fractional play playback resolution settings, easy to say. Um, why do you use this? Well, effectively, I'm on my laptop. I've got some footage coming from my card. In fact, why don't I go ahead and drag some of that in first? So this is the stuff that's on the drive. Let's grab some of these lion clips quickly. I'm just going to set a quick in and out on this. Again, this is actually playing off of the CF card. So performance could be an issue here. Let's go ahead and just click and drag this. And again, notice I simply made my I.O. points, my in and out points, right inside the source monitor, clicked right on the video, and dragged it into my timeline. If I hit the backslash key, now I can see all of my media in my timeline. If I hover over video one, and I simply perform a forward gesture on my magic mouse, or in this case, you could use a wheel mouse, I can also resize the video so that I can actually see the content that's in the video clips there. Again, a lot of flexibility in UI 
slide changes in Premiere Pro CC. So now we have all this content living together. But again, I'm reading some content off of a media card. I've got some content on my native drive. I've also got the applications running on here. And maybe I can't get full resolution playback all the time. So this is where fractional playback resolutions come into play. So currently, I'm setting everything to playback at one quarter resolution. Now, it's still using the native files. It's not changing or modifying anything. It's just displaying everything at one quarter of its native res to give you the best, smoothest playback performance. But if we go into our little settings icon here, you'll see that we also have a fractional pause resolution. And here, I have it, of course, all the time set to full. So when I pause or stop, I can actually see every pixel as it was intended. If I'm adding color corrections or transitions, I can see those things very clearly, very accurately. And I know exactly what I'm looking at is what I'm ultimately going to get when I export. So fractional playback is essential because this effectively allows you to leverage the Mercury playback engine and all of its power on any kind of system. Now, again, as we take a look at our timeline down here, let me go ahead and just turn off our audio. Again, you'll notice that now in Premiere Pro CC, we have mute and solo controls, among many other controls in our audio displays. Um, you'll notice that we have some yellow line and some red line and more yellow line here. Well, the yellow line is telling us effectively that these clips are going to play in real time. But the red line, if you've never looked at an editing application before, red line typically means not rendered, won't play in real time. Well, it does for most other applications. In Premiere Pro CC, it means, eh, that's actually what it means. Because based on how you have those fractional playback resolutions, you may very well be able to get real-time playback. You don't have to render. You don't have to do anything special. So in this case, we're going from 1080p 24 to 720p 60, back to 1080p coming off of a CF card via USB 2. And despite the fact that that is a red line, if I go ahead and play this back, you will see that as it transitions from those two clips, it plays beautifully, beautifully, smoothly, no problem whatsoever. Even the fact that it's showcasing a red line. And again, if I skip ahead here and go ahead and do this now, and again, transition to my next clip. What if I wanted to add actual transitions there? I can apply a default transition. I can wind back. I can adjust uh, the duration of these clips, perhaps, before I do that. That may have made sense. So again, I'm just right-clicking here, applying a default transition. Go ahead and play this back. And at quarter resolution, I'm able to segue from 720p 60 to 1080p 24, and that footage is coming off of this. And I'm still playing it in real time. So there's really just an amazing amount of flexibility that you have when working with your DSLR clips. You can simply take them from the media browser, either directly from the media card, although I don't necessarily recommend that. Typically, you want to copy the media to some kind of a drive. But it's as simple as reviewing it, dragging it into your project panel, setting your in and out points, right-clicking to create your new sequence, as we showed you, which will automatically take all of the proper attributes and allow that to happen for you so there's no confusion. You can mix and match footage. You can even mix DSLR with other types of footage to very quickly begin your edit. And then, of course, you have all of the tools available to you here. The most common one, of course, the razor tool. So if you want to perform an edit, shortcut key C or select the razor tool, start cutting. You can right-click inside of a clip. You can ripple delete. Or in the case of something like this, if you right-click on the edits themselves, go back to my selection tool here, you'll see that you have various editing options for you. So ripple trim in and out, roll edits, where if we were to choose a roll edit, and I double-click on this, now this brings us into our dynamic timeline trimmer. And you can see we're actually, this is what we call a through edit. I just cut inside of the clip, but I didn't actually modify the duration or anything like that. But now you can perform and click and drag and slip and slide right inside the program monitor here. You've got the ability to trim backward or forward X number of frames, apply default transitions. And again, you can just click out of there to go back to your regular program monitor and keep on working. This is really just the very beginning of working with DSLR footage in Premiere Pro CC, and there's so much more. So so we'll hope we'll tune into the next episode. Hope you've enjoyed this. See you next time.